We've got a few questions written down in there. You don't have loads. Um, so obviously we, we run this website where we go exploring like um, sort of everything like bunkers and all sorts of like ruins and that in the local area. Yeah. So um, what ruins is that? Um, apart from me. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, well, I suppose it's sort of like the un unseen, like the less not like the obvious side to Canby's history. I suppose that's why we sort of interested our Doctor Field with that because it's more of that sort of cultural history, you know. I think really, I mean, you know, we like it's, it's sort of um, like most people think of Canby history, and they think about sort of the Dutch and that sort of thing. I think we sort of want to bring like a different perspective to it. Um, I was going to ask you, as a child, did you explore? Much of Canvey, a bit like we do for our website. Well, in, in fact, it was that Canvey, when I was a kid, Canvey Island was almost an adventure playground. Mm. You, uh, up on the up on the sea wall near Thorny Bay, you had these um, what we used to call the forts. Mm. And they were in fact gun towers that that had been built in the Second World War. And uh, I remember when, oh, when I was very young, you could, if you walk around the sea wall, they still had the guns. These big naval guns pointing out over the yeah, yeah. over the estuary, and uh, anyway, eventually they, they took the guns away, and they just left these towers with the gun turntable and everything, right? Just yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's where you'd go and play. You know, yeah. you could you could go right from one way up into yeah, yeah. the lookout tower, or you, there was also an ammunition lift. The, the, you know, one of these lifts yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. and it was still all kind of working. You know, oh, and yeah, down, yeah. It, so you know, yeah. stuff like that was pretty good. There were there were two or three, I mean there was a what we used to call a gun site as well which was uh, it's in the middle of the housing estate now yeah, where that was so the area's little gyps little gyps yeah, yeah. Like that, that was that, left, yeah, that was yeah. freak it was really it was quite extensive and you could you go, you'd go yeah. in there and it was like yeah. standing in water and it was pitch dark yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know it, it quite freaky yeah yeah, yeah. I think like what got us Sort of inter interested in the website is that, like you know, what every child does, you know, and then that we sort of took it a bit more serious. Yeah, well, like I say, those were, those were the there, and also going up to you would go up to the lobster smack, and uh, there were all the jetties and the and there were cranes and things near where the old tanks are. Mm. And if you walk along and along, you get to Thorny Bay, and that was where those yeah. forts were. Mm. I mean, I should have kept them forts. They were great. They <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, they yeah. look really great. They really yeah. look fierce, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were lots of fun. Yeah. Very dangerous, obviously. Yeah. Right. Really. Yeah. Da I mean, like there used to be these outside staircases. Yeah. Going to get up to the um, upper stories, and uh, I think I don't know. <laughs> they they ripped. The, I don't, what did they rip the banisters? Or I don't know. I don't know if they were trying yeah, to yeah. discourage kids from from uh, playing yeah. there or something. But there was one point where there was a door. There was a sort of landing, and mm. there was a door, and it used to open out and, and block the landing. So when you were going up, what you had yeah. to do was swing round. Like you were about oh, yeah, fifty yeah. foot up, you know, and swing oh, round. Yeah. So they made it really, yeah, yeah. really <laughs> safe. Um, so at university, you did some history courses, didn't you? There. Uh, not n not his history so much. I was I, w I was very interested in medieval poetry, and uh, r really literary things that apply to medieval history. Mm. So, uh, would you consider yourself a history fan? Then? Hmm? Would you consider yourself like history fan? A fan of it? I don't know. I don't consider myself as anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so um, we did want to ask you about the time at Westcliff High School for boys and that. Well, I've got to say, I, did, I didn't I did enjoy school. I didn't like it. And uh, probably nothing to do with... Westcliff High School was obviously a, 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 probably a perfectly typical grammar school of the time. I went there in 1958. And uh, as I say, I didn't really like school. 
and I, I haven't got any particularly <laughs> pleasant memories <laughs> of it. Um, except when, when I got into the sixth form, I did um, art was one of my A levels, yeah. and and I did enjoy that. Finally, yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. We used <laughs> yeah, to muck yeah. about a lot, and yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, say most of the time, no, uh, schools are oh, dear, what a drag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So obviously, I do not know you do do paint some painting and also astronomy, and that it's obviously quite academic. Would you say that come, came from school, or is that more something you sort of picked up over time yourself? It is. I mean, I I I, I must have obviously learnt something at school, you know. But I really don't. I mean, everything that. Uh, I've gone into and and like I mean like just going to university and that yeah. it was indi really independently of the school it wasn't uh, uh, I I had a year after I'd done my A levels of dithering about and decided I wanted to go to university but I made that decision yeah, myself yeah. after leaving school mm. and uh, yeah I it's a big blank in my mind yeah, yeah. really what's the yeah. high school <laughs> yeah did you enjoy music at school no oh wow it, it was like the, the the only music we got was was this uh, you got a music and there was this old geezer he was like um, I think he was was he supposed to be a chemistry teacher or something? But he was given the gig of like teaching you music, and his why of teaching you music. They have this big old, used to have these big old wooden gramophones and that. And sometimes they might play a record on it, you know, Elgar's Enigma yeah, Variations yeah. or something. You're sitting there, I think. And uh, but mostly what this guy did was he he dictated to you all about. In fact, it was bloody Elgar's Enigma Variations, right? <laughs> You dictated to what they're all about, and yeah, you're right. You, you're really, good, you know, you're thinking, you silly old, b you know, you know, you know, and that, and that really made me um, dislike classical music. Yeah. yeah. And it, and again, it wasn't until after, long after I left school that I, I discovered that there was in fact some value in yeah, classical yeah. music. But th that guy really, really yeah. turned me off. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. I although I, I mean, I started actually. Taking an interest in music when I was at Westcliff, um, I don't know the number of the room. You see, if you if you go in the the, the big entrance, yeah, mm. you come in and you turn left, and the first classroom on that on that quadrangle. Yeah, we used to go there for geography lessons, and one day we went there, and the desk I was sitting in. There was a an electric guitar. Obviously, it was yeah. somebody had been making it in woodwork, you yeah. see. But there was the but, the, and I was absolutely fascinated by this thing. I didn't know anything about music then, but just looking at this guitar, yeah, looking yeah, at the strings yeah. and the knobs and the yeah. whatnot, you know. And I I was just uh, really really fascinated yeah. by it, and and decided that yeah, I, I'd like to get one of these and and do this. So like, yeah. as I say, I didn't know anything at all about music. Yeah, got myself a guitar, and then it was a. You know, I mean, a lot of people were playing then. Yeah. Mm. You know, and so there'd be in any one class, there'd probably be two or three bands. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're just finding out like that. Mm, mm. So you have you've been the Solid Senders and also the Blockheads, but your most famous for being in Doctor Feelgood. So, yeah. <laughs> you have any particular memories from it? Well, you see, I mean, I never intended to do this. I, I don't know what I did in ten, um, you know, but I, I'm in the music business because of Dr. Feelgood. Mm. And, but, and, but Dr. Feelgood was something that we started on Canvey Island pure, purely for enjoyment. You yeah, know, yeah. It, was, it was a real local band. And yeah. um, for a couple of years, that's exactly what it was. We, were, we would play uh, just around South End and that. And then after a couple of years, we started to play in London. And the in these two years of playing around South End, we kind of worked out our thing, the way it looked and the the kind of music we were doing, the show and that. And and when we started playing in London, we we really stirred up a lot of interest because we were all completely unknown. The band was brand new like that, and and yet it was really kind of 
working mm. and uh, and and in, in within the next few months so I found myself a professional musician and yeah I could never could get away <laughs> from it <laughs> yeah so you say you didn't plan to go into music what did you want to be when you were younger huh what did you want to be when you were younger or was you not sure like what job uh jo <laughs> Well, I, I, I've never really done a job, actually, you know. That's one good thing about the music business, is you avoid having to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was actually a school teacher for a short time. In fact, I got this job you know, teaching at um, King John's School in Benfleet. Uh, at almost exactly the same moment that I, I, I bumped into Lee Brillo and we decided to start Dr. Feelgood. And... Uh, um, I started this teaching job after just after Christmas. I found out they had a vacancy for an English teacher, and uh, so I was doing that and playing gigs at weekends. And and by the time the the school year ended, the summer, I thought I think oh, I think I'd go for the old rock and roll. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I did. I, I liked teaching actually. It was I really enjoyed it, but. Uh, I enjoyed the rock and roll a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, also, um, yeah, um, you don't you play the guitar without the plectrum and that. Um, I mean, I've I've only been doing it for a few months. I I've given it a go, and <laughs> can just about like strum it without the plectrum, but. I think like, it gives you a few like, blisters and that just from yeah. like, an hour a day. Yeah. Well, well the, 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 you see, the, the answer to this is to use a plectrum. <laughs> yeah. um, there, there is no, there's no real point in, in my, in my uh, guitar style of not using a plectrum, mm. right? In fact, I mean, I copied my style from uh, Mick Green from the, of the Pirates, yeah. and he used a plectrum, mm -hmm. right? And in, yeah, in fact, yeah. that whole kind of chopping... Yeah business is is really a plectrum yeah, yeah. thing but i mean i, I ended up but, but look i mean i'll get look i mean i'll get cut i mean this this was all covered in, covered in but my son right was when we were doing the farewell tour my son's band were were um supporting us and by the time we come to play the london kids he's his hands were bleeding. I mean, all his fingers were bleeding yeah, before yeah. the gig. I was so worried for him, right? He's, go, he's going, what can I do? I said, son, there's nothing you can do. They're bleeding, they're bleeding. You know, I said, yeah, yeah. try using a plectrum, right? But his fingers, his fingers hurt so much yeah, yeah. that he couldn't even hold a plectrum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because once you get on stage and the whole panic yeah, of yeah. everybody, you don't feel, yeah, you yeah, got, you yeah. don't feel it. Yeah. So you can, you can probably make mincemeat of your hand yeah. and you, you feel it when you go off stage but mm. why actually up there yeah. just spray the blood of the people <laughs> so I think um, like with, with the plectrum playing mm. like tunes that are like especially like with the choppy quick like movements then like if, unless you, if I don't have it up that loud all you can hear is like like scratching against it yeah. I think with your fingers you don't get that and I think I can hear like the song a bit easier it, it's uh, I mean, how you how you yeah, play yeah. in the end, you just have to find your way to how yeah, you play. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I didn't. I mean, for instance, I'm left-handed. Mm. When I first started, I was I was I started off playing this way round, and I, I was so useless. Yeah, right. Yeah. That I, after a while, I thought I tell you, I got myself a right-handed guitar. I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn to play right-handed. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, Tell myself I've only just started, so yeah. I won't feel such a twat, you know. And uh, and but oh man, it's hard. It's hard to do. It's mm -hmm. counterintuitive, you know. And that that was a struggle. Yeah. yeah. And I think in the course of that, I stopped using a plectrum. Mm. It was enough just to hold the guitar that way round, yeah, let alone yeah, hold yeah. a plectrum as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, you've travelled a lot. You said about the farewell gig and that, but you particularly like Japan, don't you? Yeah. Well, we've we've. Uh, I've been there three times this year, and we're going back at the end of this month. Well, next week. Um, we've uh, ever since the mid '80s, my band we've we've worked. I think we've toured Japan 25 times or something like that, and I've got a lot of friends over there. And I really love the place, and yeah, it's a pl good place, good place to be. 
So, in Oil City Confidential came out in 2009, and so that was quite a while after Dr. Feelgood. Mm. What did you originally think when they said about making the documentary? Well, the, the, the first thing that baffled me was I, 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 I said, well, how, how are they going to do this? Because uh, Dr. Feelgood, we existed, in, I mean, obviously Lee Brillo's dead. Uh, Dr. Feelgood, we existed in the time before video cameras. Um, so there's not much footage, you know, of the, yeah. of the band. But I thought, I don't know, George Julian Temple's achievement. You know, he made a he made a really really good film out of it, uh, out of the, out of the the uh, what there was. Mm. Yeah. Um, so obviously, from the documentary and the bands and that, you are really well known, and uh, also the Railway Hotel where they've got your <laughs> face as a sign there. Yeah, I mean, I, I start I've started in in this last year or so actually going down the railway it's a really very groovy place to be go down there on a sat on a sunday afternoon there's usually a blues band playing you know it's free to get in okay and, and ever, a really good atmosphere and uh a good some good music goes down there. anyway i've started going down there it's great when you get a certain age you see it's like me <laughs> my mate french henry we 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 turn into two old geezers, right? And we go, we go walking around South End, going, oh look at that, you know, they've ruined the place, and they not like it used to be in the sixties, and and uh, we usually end up at the railway. Mm. Anyway, so uh, haven't become a, a bit of a fixture there. I think they decided to make me even more of a fixture. No, this is quite a buzz actually. Yeah, yeah. Quite, you know, it's, yeah, you know, it's a bit of immortality. Yeah. So, um, why did you move from Canvey to Westcliff? Because I made some money. Why? <laughs> 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 um, uh, so, obviously, not long ago, you was at the Village Green Festival as a surprise. Why did you decide to do that? Well, let's get on to the old cancer, shall we? <laughs> At the at the beginning of this year, that I was uh, diagnosed with cancer and told that I got about uh, ten months to live. I felt perfectly healthy, and uh, and I said to them, well, "How long am I going to feel healthy before this thing starts doing me in?" And uh, they said, "Well, you know, maybe six months, seven months, some, you know." We kind of get into that now, and uh, anyway decided to do the farewell tour. I thought, right, I'll, I'll be fit to do that. So I just do want to take the opportunity. And that, in fact, when we were doing it, I was thinking, oh man, I hope I'm fit enough to do this. And that was back in April, you know, and, and I was. And, uh, but I, uh, when the farewell tour was finished, I, I, I said, that's it, I'm retiring. Because the thing is, you can't, uh, if you want to book gigs, yeah. You've got to book them in advance, you know, some time in advance. And obviously, if you don't even know if you're going to be well, it, it, it's difficult. But things like uh, the Village Green and a couple of other festivals we do, are uh, festivals, right? Which means if, if I can take these gigs and if I'm not fit, it ain't going to stop the show, yeah. you know. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm still feeling okay, do some more gigs. And especially because the, the Japanese persuaded us to do. Fuji Rock, uh, which is at the end of this month, <coughs> and um, so, so having said to him, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it if I'm still standing. Uh, and then when that other people found out about this, they started saying, "Well, will you?" You know, so I said, "Well, if I'm going to play it in Japan in at the end of the month, I, I can play anywhere else in the middle of the month. Whether I whether I play more after, I don't know. It's just it's quite weird this because you don't you just you don't know, you know, you wake, you wake in the morning, you think, am I all right? You know, you think, you, you get a little, you get a little headache or something like that. You think, ah! You know, just, but uh, that's just something uh, I have to live with for the time being. Yeah. So when you uh, found out the news about the cancer at the start of the year, did you have any particular wishes of anything that you wanted to do? No, I mean, my, my reactions to it were completely unexpected my initial reaction to it was this tremendous high 
I got mm. just wow, I mean, it was great, and it lasted for sort of a couple of months. You know, I'm just walking around thinking, wow, it, like it makes you feel very, very alive, and you actually appreciate just being alive, which is something mm. you can you can forget to do. You know, you just go along doing whatever you're doing. You don't realize, mm. <laughs> look, there's these trees and the sky and yeah, yeah. all of that, yeah. and uh, um, it, it, it gives you a very different perspective on everything. Mm. Um, I think, generally speaking, I, th th there wasn't anything. Uh, that I'd left undone in my life or anything yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. you know. Um, mm. Yeah. I think I've had more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, what's it like having a manager as well? Huh? What's it like to have a manager? Well, it's it's very handy, you see, because I mean, I, I, as I get more and more gormless as well. I mean, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I knew something was going on today, right? And then you know, I just about remember it was you two, right? <laughs> um, um, but it's good having uh, Rob to uh, yeah, do, yeah. someone else is doing yeah, it. Yeah. He, he would just tell me yeah, what yeah. to do, you know, which is actually ideal for me. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, if someone's coming into the music industry in sort of today. Uh, what advice would you give for them? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't know. Like, so my, my, my son's uh, got this band, Eight Rounds Rapid, right? And and uh, they're, they're starting to do quite well. But I can't give him any practical advice because I don't really know anything about yeah. the music business. You know, my, my kind of, my 15 minutes was quite a while ago. And, uh, and I think everything happens differently now. Mm. You know, for instance, when I, when I started learning to play, there were, lo you know, you'd form little bands with your mates and that, and, and there were loads of gigs around, like at the youth club or uh, the yacht clubs or the, uh, the uh, weddings and, you know, and whatnot. You, you, and so you, you were actually playing a lot, you know. When my son started to learn to play, he, I, I think he was, I think he was, he was going for Asia. You know, it, by the time he got to Asia, uh, 18 or 19, right? And he, he hadn't done a gig, you know. And uh, and I was saying, bloody hell, by the time I was 18 or 19, I'd done hundreds, you know. And yeah. I, I think things happen in a different way now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, it, it relies on the uh, cut off chords, like this. Go on, do this chord. Go on, I'm going to show you how to do it. Just, I, I you, can do that. She does it right now. Yeah, yeah. go on, it. show me what you're doing, she does it right. right. Yeah. The one above that 
Oh. Oh. Uh, next oh. one up. No, like no, no, when I say oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. You're just doing exactly the same yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. And when you're doing solo, it's like, right. what's happening? Am I making sense? Yeah, no, yeah, I get, I get, yeah. <laughs> it get <won't> me. <laughs> um, you just, it's the same thing, right? It, mm. It's basically right. Like, so I go up to the C, it's on that chord shape. You know, like, th th this is this yeah. all seems very basic. Well, I know how confusing it looks when you when you're first starting out, right? But it's all the, the whole yeah, thing, yeah. right? The, all the chords, all based around that chord shape. This one, like yeah. that. And, yeah. the, and the chords you want are G, C, and D. Yeah. Going back home just slightly. Now you really got really to get that one. Like, yeah. And Mick Green taught me this riff, right? Mm. And the, the first time we played it, I went, wow, what's that, yeah, man? Yeah. You know, and he's, he showed me how to do it. And it takes a bit of a. You've got to get that, because you, cause you get the. Also going back home, I think it must be. I think is it. It's a, a cold, and it's like where. It, 
No, like, like where it's like she works hard every night. Yeah. To make, it's like, it changes slightly, but you I can't yeah, get yeah, that, what that bit is. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was doing in the battle yeah, yeah. earlier, right? So, right, exactly what you're doing right is you're going, yeah. you, 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 your um, yeah, verse is on... <laughs> Verses on C and J, but she does it right. Right, and it, that's a D. I think it's a third what, tape yeah. or something. Yeah. You get, come on, see if you can do that. Set. Because it's, it's useful it. a lot, right? You go right. Uh, first finger. Yeah. Uh, oh. On the on the fifth. Oh, sorry, no, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this finger is there. Yeah. And this, mm. this, you can either do, you can do that, that, and your little right, finger yeah. on the. That's it. That's yeah, the that shape. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So you go. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Then just remember that yeah, shape, yeah. and then <laughs> then yeah. learn it up to do it. Yeah. Thanks. Because yeah. I, like when I'm when, if I'm. You, you, I use that one very commonly, say so anything in yeah, G, yeah. right? Because like the riffs, there's nothing on the internet about like how to play like each riff. Uh, that, like, that song, you know what right? I mean? I, I mean, when I was writing that song, I thought, well, this this one's not much good. <laughs> and um, I remember some, I don't know, three or four years ago, the guys from Doctor Fieldwood came up to me and mm. asked me. They said they want, they really wanted to do it, and, and would I write down the lyrics? Right, yeah, yeah. for them because because Lee was, was uh, his diction was sometimes slurred right and they mm. couldn't tell and I couldn't bloody remember it and I started I'm, I'm great I thought oh, I remember now I'm writing this and I think oh, <laughs> it's a terrible song right but then when we played with Alison Moyne at, at the Coco <laughs> that was the one of the ones she wanted to do yeah, yeah. you know so it it's. I'm pretty sure it'd be an F. I do a lot in F actually, yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you why. Because F is the, is the lowest one down. You yeah. can use the shape, yeah. and it means you you got you got that body yeah, yeah. But, um I think we no no. I'll tell a lie. We used to do that one in G because I think. <laughs> And you're just playing like a bow diddly beat. easy one to do like because uh, I just like find out as many well, there as are, I there, can I um, <laughs> well so many of my songs are based around that one bloody yeah, trick yeah, yeah. Right? I mean you know, she does it right a rock set's based yeah. around the same thing right you're just going <laughs> it's the same thing with the old right hand yeah. up and down and, 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 and 
and that G. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the riff is. <laughs> Sounds a bit different to the rest, perhaps. I can't I remember. Know. We did that actually. Yeah, no, it's more it, like not like Mickey Jones. It doesn't have like a rhythm throughout it so much. If you know what I mean. Like, it goes. Don't know. Because they're all the same. <laughs> no, no. They're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> 